Red Hot Chili Peppers, also sometimes shortened to the Chili Peppers or abbreviated as RHCP, are an American funk rock band formed in Los Angeles in 1983. The group's musical style primarily consists of rock with an emphasis on funk, as well as elements from other genres such as punk rock and psychedelic rock. When played live, their music incorporates elements of jam band due to the improvised nature of much of their performances. Currently, the band consists of founding members vocalist Anthony Kiedis and bassist Flea, longtime drummer Chad Smith, and former touring guitarist Josh Klinghoffer. Red Hot Chili Peppers are one of the best selling bands of all time with over 80 million records sold worldwide, have been nominated for 16 Grammy Awards, of which they have won six and are the most successful band in alternative rock radio history, currently holding the records for most number one singles, 13, most cumulative weeks at number one, 85, and most top 10 songs, 25, on the Billboard Alternative Songs chart. In 2012, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The band's original lineup, originally named Tony Flo and the Miraculously Majestic Masters of Mayhem, featured guitarist Hillel Slovak and drummer Jack Irons, alongside Kiedis and Flea. Because of commitments to other bands, Slovak and Irons did not play on the band's self-titled debut album, 1984. Slovak performed on the second and third albums, Freaky Styley, 1985, and The Uplift Mofo Party Plan, 1987, but he died from a heroin overdose in 1988. As a result of his friend's death, Irons chose to depart from the group. After short-lived replacements at guitar and drums, John Fruscianti and Chad Smith joined in 1988. The lineup of Flea, Kiedis, Fruscianti and Smith was the longest-lasting and recorded five studio albums beginning with Mother's Milk, 1989. In 1990, the group signed with Warner Brothers Records and recorded the album Blood Sugar Sex Magic. 1991, under producer Rick Rubin. This album became the band's first commercial success, but Fruscianti grew uncomfortable with it and left abruptly in 1992 in the middle of the Blood Sugar Sex Magic tour. After two temporary guitarists, Dave Navarro joined the group in 1994 and played on their subsequent album, One Hot Minute, 1995. Although commercially successful, the album failed to match the critical or popular acclaim of Blood Sugar Sex Magic, selling less than half as much as its predecessor. Navarro was fired from the band in 1998. Fruscianti, fresh out of drug rehabilitation, rejoined the band that same year at Flea's request. The reunited quartet returned to the studio to record Californication, 1999 which became the band's biggest commercial success with 16 million copies worldwide. That album was followed three years later by By The Way, 2002, and then four years later by the double album Stadium Arcadium, 2006, their first number one album in America. After a world tour, the group went on an extended hiatus. Fruscianti announced he was amicably leaving the band in 2009 to focus on his solo career. Klinghoffer, who had worked both as a sideman for the band on their Stadium Arcadium tour and on Fruscianti's solo projects, replaced him. The band's tenth studio album, I Am With You, was released in 2011 and topped the charts in 18 different countries. The band released their eleventh studio album, The Getaway, in 2016. The album was produced by Danger Mouse marking the first time since 1989's Mother's Milk that the Red Hot Chili Peppers had not worked with Rubin, and topped the charts in ten different countries. History Early History, 1983-1984 Red Hot Chili Peppers were formed in Los Angeles by singer Anthony Kiedis, guitarist Hillel Slovak, bassist Flea, and drummer Jack Irons, all of whom were classmates from Fairfax High School. Originally going under the band name of Tony Flo and the Miraculously Majestic Masters of Mayhem, their first performance was at the Rhythm Lounge Club to a crowd of approximately 30 people, opening for Gary and Neighbors' voices. Inspired by punk funk acts like The Contortions and Defunct, they wrote for the occasion, 
which involved the band improvising music while Kitas rapped a poem he had written called Out in L.A. At the time, Slovak and Irons were already committed to another group, What Is This? However, the performance was so lively, that the band was asked to return the following week. Due to this unexpected success, the band changed its name to Red Hot Chili Peppers, playing several more shows at various LA clubs and musical venues. Six songs from these initial shows were on the band's first demo tape. In November 1983, manager Lindy Goetz struck a seven album deal with Emmy America and Enigma Records. Two weeks earlier, however, what is this? had also obtained a record deal with MCA. Slovak and Irons still considered the Red Hot Chili Peppers as only a side project and so in December 1983 they quit to focus on what is this. Instead of dissolving the band, Kitas and Flea recruited new members. Cliff Martinez, a friend of Flea's and member from the punk band, The Weirdos, was the new replacement for Irons. The band held auditions for a new guitarist but decided after a few practices that Weirdo's guitarist Dix Denny did not fit. Kitas described the two final candidates, Mark Nine and Jack Sherman, respectively as a hip avant-garde art school refugee and a nerd-looking guy with a combed back Jufro with an unknown background. Musically Sherman clicked right away with Flea and Martinez and was hired as Slovak's replacement. The band released their eponymous debut album. The Red Hot Chili Peppers on August 10, 1984. Though the album did not set sales records, airplay on college radio and MTV helped to build a fan base, and the album ultimately sold 300,000 copies. Gang of Four guitarist Andy Gill, who produced the album didn't embrace the band's musical aesthetic or ideology, argued constantly with the band over the record's sound. Kitas recalled, that Andy's thing was having a hit at all costs, but it was such a mistake to have an agenda. Despite the misgivings of Kitas and Flea, Gill pushed the band to play with a cleaner, crisper, more radio-friendly sound. The band was disappointed in the record's overall sound, feeling it was overly polished and as if it had gone through a sterilizing goody two-shoes machine. The album included backing vocals by Gwen Dickey, the singer for the successful 1970s disco funk group Rose Royce. The band embarked on a grueling tour during which they performed 60 shows in 64 days. During the tour, continuing musical and lifestyle tension between Kitas and Sherman complicated the transition between concert and daily band life. When the tour ended in October 1984, Sherman was fired. Hillel Slovak, who had just quit What Is This, would rejoin the band in early 1985. Building a following and Slovak's death, 1985-1988. George Clinton produced the next album, Freaky Styly, 1985. Clinton combined various elements of punk and funk into the band's repertoire, allowing their music to incorporate a variety of distinct styles. The album featured Maceo Parker and Fred Wesley on many of the album's tracks. The band often indulged in heavy heroin use while recording the album, which influenced the lyrics and musical direction of the album. The band had a much better relationship with Clinton than with Gill, but Freaky Styly, released on August 16, 1985, also achieved little success, failing to make an impression on any chart. The subsequent tour was also considered unproductive by the band. Despite the lack of success, the band was satisfied with Freaky Styly, Kitas reflected that it so surpassed anything we thought we could have done that we were thinking we were on the road to enormity. The band appeared in the 1986 movie Thrashin', directed by David Winters and starring Josh Brolin, playing the song Black Eyed Blonde from Freaky Styly. During this time the band also appeared in the movie Tough Guys starring Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas performing the song Set It Straight at a Los Angeles nightclub. In spring 1986, the band decided to begin work on their upcoming album. Emmy gave the band a budget of $5,000 to record a demo tape, and the band chose to work with producer Keith Levine, because he shared the band's interest in drugs. Levine and Slovak decided to put aside $2,000 of the budget to spend on heroin and cocaine, which created tension between the band members. Martinez Hart was no longer in the band, but he did not quit, so Kitas and Flea fired him. 
After the firing of Martinez in April 1986, original drummer Jack Irons rejoined the band Tukitas, Flea, and Slovak's Great Surprise, which marked the first time all four founding members were together since 1983. During the recording and subsequent tour of Freaky Styli, Kitas and Slovak were dealing with debilitating heroin addictions. Due to his addiction, Kitas didn't have the same drive or desire to come up with ideas or lyrics and appeared at rehearsal literally asleep. Flea, Slovak, and Irons informed Kitas to clean up his drug habit or be fired from the band. The band won the Law Weekly Band of the Year award, which prompted Kitas to get clean in order to continue making music. Kitas called his mother in Michigan for guidance and she promptly sent him to drug rehabilitation. After Kitas completed his stint in rehab, he felt a whole new wave of enthusiasm due to his sobriety and wrote the lyrics to Fight Like a Brave on the plane ride home. After a month away from the band, he rejoined Red Hot Chili Peppers in Los Angeles to record the group's next album, The Uplift Mofo Party Plan, 1987. The Chili Peppers attempted to hire Rick Rubin to produce their third album, but he declined. The band eventually hired Michael Beinhorn from the Art Funk Project Material, the band's last choice. Kitas sat down with producer Michael Beinhorn to discuss the recording of the album, Kitas planned to record the album in 10 days and write the songs during the recording sessions. Songs began to form quickly, and the album took shape, blending the same funk feel and rhythms as Freaky Styli with a harder, more immediate approach to punk rock. The album was recorded in the basement of the Capitol Records building. The recording process for the album was difficult, Kitas would frequently disappear to seek drugs. After 50 days of sobriety, Kitas decided to take drugs again to celebrate his new music. His drug use made a mess of the early recording process but the band still had an enjoyable time recording the album. The band was musically inspired by the return of their original drummer Jack Irons, who added such an important and different element to our chemistry. Slovak helped Kitas record his vocals on the album. In between takes, Slovak would run around the studio out of excitement and say this is the most beautiful thing we've ever done. On September 29, 1987, the Uplift Mofo Party Plan was released becoming their first album to appear on any chart. Although it peaked at only number 148 on the Billboard 200, this was a significant success compared to the first two. During this period however, Kitas and Slovak had both developed serious drug addictions, often abandoning the band, each other, and their significant others for days on end. Slovak's addiction led to his death on June 25, 1988 not long after the conclusion of the Uplift tour. Kitas fled the city and did not attend Slovak's funeral, referenced in the song This Is The Place, considering the situation to be surreal and dreamlike. After returning to L.A. following his departure after Slovak's death, Kitas, Flea, Irons and manager Lindy Goetz had a meeting to figure out what to do next. Irons decided he had to leave the group, saying that he did not want to be part of a group where his friends were dying. Irons, who would battle through years of depression, went on to become a member of Seattle grunge band Pearl Jam many years later. With Slovak dead and Irons quitting, Kitas and Flea debated whether they should continue making music, but ultimately decided to move ahead, hoping to continue what Slovak helped build. Successful new lineup, 1988-1989. After losing two of the original band members, Flea and Kitas started looking for musicians to fill those spots. Shortly after Iron's departure they chose as Slovak's replacement Dwayne Blackbird McKnight, former member of Parliament Funkadelik and who at one point briefly filled in for Slovak, when he was temporarily fired. D. H. Peligro of the punk rock outfit Dead Kennedys replaced Irons. Kitas and Flea had been friends of Peligro for many years and even had a joke band together called Three Little Butt Hairs. With a new lineup set, Kitas decided to enter rehab to fix his drug problem. Kitas entered a rehab facility in Van Nuys called ASAP. After two weeks into Kitas' rehab, he was taken by his counselor, Bob Timmons, to finally visit Slovak's grave. Kitas had no desire to be there, however, Timmons urged him to talk to Slovak. Within minutes, Kitas had opened up and could not stop crying. 
Thirty days later, Kiedis left rehab and was ready to resume his career with the band. Three dates into the tour, McKnight was fired, because the chemistry was not there with the other three. McKnight was with the band long enough to record one song, Blues for Meister, also the only recording to feature Peligro, a song sung by Flea. McKnight was so unhappy about being fired he threatened to burn down Kita's house. Shortly after McKnight's firing, Peligro introduced Kitas and Flea to a young teenage guitarist named John Fruscianti. Kitas actually had met Fruscianti a year earlier outside of one of the band's shows. Fruscianti was originally directed to audition for the band Thelonious Monster, but Kitas said that he knew right away that Fruscianti would be in his band. An avid Red Hot Chili Peppers fan, Fruscianti was, according to Flea, a really talented and knowledgeable musician. He Fruscianti knows all the shit I don't know. I basically know nothing about music theory and he's studied it to death, inside and out. He's a very disciplined musician all he cares about are his guitar and his cigarettes. Fruscianti performed his first show with the band on September 17, 1988. The new lineup immediately began writing music for the next album and went on a short tour dubbed the Turd Town Tour. Although in November, Kitas and Flea felt the need to fire drummer Peligro due to his own drug and alcohol problems. Much like McKnight, Peligro did not take the news well. Flea stayed in bed for days after making the decision. Years later, Kitas said firing Peligro was one of the toughest things the band ever had to do, although Kitas became a major part of Peligro's road to sobriety, which began right after he was fired. The Chili Peppers were again without a drummer and were forced to hold open auditions. Denise Zoom, a friend of the band suggested Chad Smith, claiming he was the best drummer she had ever seen. The band agreed to audition Smith, but he was late and the last drummer to audition. Kiedis recalled the first time he saw Smith by saying, I spied this big lummox walking down the street with a really bad guns and roses hairdo and clothes that were not screaming I've got style. Smith was a six-foot-three-inch tall drummer who, according to Flea, lit a fire under our asses. From the moment they started jamming, Smith and Flea instantly found chemistry. Smith was a hard-hitting musician with whom the Chili Peppers believed they would create a strong relationship. Kiedis said the audition with Smith left the band in a state of frenzied laughter, that we couldn't shake out of for a half an hour. Smith was so much different from the other three. Kitas, Flea, and Fruscianti were heavily influenced by punk rock, whereas Smith's taste in heavy metal music and his biker appearance contrasted with their punk rock views. Kitas informed Smith he would be hired on one condition, as an initiation to the band, Smith had to cut his long hair. He refused, though Kitas was not about to argue with the much larger Smith. Smith was hired as the band's fourth drummer on December 3, 1988. Unlike the stop-start sessions for the Uplift Mofo Party Plan, 1987, where Kitas would frequently disappear to seek drugs, pre-production for Mother's Milk, 1989, went smoothly. The band recorded basic tracks during March and early April 1989 at Holly Gully Studios in Silver Lake, songs like Knock Me Down were formed from jam sessions without any input from returning producer Michael Beinhorn while Sexy Mexican Maid. Stone Cold Bush and Taste the Pain, which was recorded prior to Smith joining and features Fishbone drummer Philip Fish Fisher, were written with Peligro. Although there had been stress and conflict during the recording of other Chili Peppers albums, the Mother's Milk sessions were especially uncomfortable due to Beinhorn's incessant desire to create a hit. Fruscianti and Kitas were frustrated with the producer's attitude. In April 1989, the Chili Peppers embarked on a short tour to break in the new lineup. Released on August 16, 1989, Mother's Milk peaked at number 52 on the US Billboard 200. The record failed to chart in the United Kingdom and Europe, but climbed to number 33 in Australia. Knock Me Down reached number 6 on the US Modern Rock tracks, whereas Higher Ground charted at number 11, the latter of the two ultimately proved to be more successful reaching number 54 in the UK and 45 in Australia and France. 
Mother's Milk was certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America in late March 1990 it is now certified platinum and was the first Chili Peppers album to ship over 500,000 units. Breakthrough, International Fame, and Fruscianti's First Departure, 1990-1993 In 1990, after the success of Mother's Milk, the group decided they had had enough of Emmy and entered a major label bidding war ultimately signing with Warner Brothers Records and hired Rick Rubin to produce their then untitled fifth album. Rubin would go on to produce five of the band's subsequent studio albums, but originally turned the band down in 1987 because of Anthony's and Hillel's drug problems. This time, in 1990, Rubin felt the band was in a better place and much more focused. The writing process for this album was far more productive than it had been for Mother's Milk, with Kitas stating, Every day, there was new music for me to lyricize. The band spent six months recording a new album, with long periods of rehearsal, songwriter, and incubating ideas. However, Rubin was dissatisfied with a regular recording studio, thinking the band would work better in a less orthodox setting, believing it would enhance their creative output. Rubin suggested the mansion magician Harry Houdini once lived in, to which they agreed. A crew was hired to set up a recording studio and other equipment required for production in the house. The band decided that they would remain inside the mansion for the duration of recording, though according to Ketis Smith was convinced the location was haunted, and refused to stay. He would, instead, come each day by motorcycle. Smith himself disputes this account and instead claims the real reason he didn't stay at the mansion was because he wanted to be with his wife. Fruscianti, however, disagreed with Smith, and said there are definitely ghosts in the house, and Fruscianti felt they were very friendly. We the band have nothing but warm vibes and happiness everywhere we go in this house. Ruben is the current owner of the studio known as The Mansion. During production, the band agreed to let Flea's brother-in-law document the creative process on film. When the album's recording was complete, the Chili Peppers released the film, titled Funky Monks. The band was unable to decide on the title of the album, but to Ruben, one particular song title stuck out, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Although it was not a featured song, Ruben believed it to be clearly the best title. On September 24, 1991, Blood Sugar Sex Magic was released. Give It Away was released as the first single, it eventually became one of the band's biggest and most well-known songs, winning a Grammy Award in 1992 for Best Hard Rock Performance with Vocal and became the band's first number one single on the modern rock chart The Ballad Under the Bridge was released as a second single, and went on to reach number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart the highest the band has reached on that chart as of 2016 and became one of the band's most recognizable songs. Other singles such as Breaking the Girl and Suck My Kiss also charted well. The album sold over 12 million copies. Blood Sugar Sex Magic was listed at number 310 on the Rolling Stone magazine list of the 500 greatest albums of all time, and in 1992 it rose to number 3 on the US album charts almost a year after its release. The band kicked off their Blood Sugar Sex Magic tour which featured Nirvana, Pearl Jam, and Smashing Pumpkins, three of that era's biggest up-and-coming bands in alternative music, as opening acts. The unexpected success instantly turned Red Hot Chili Peppers into rock stars. Fruscianti was blindsided by his newfound fame, and struggled to cope with it. Soon after the album's release, he began to develop a dislike for the band's popularity and personal problems between Kitas and Fruscianti began to unfold. Kitas recalled that he and Fruscianti used to get into heated discussions backstage after concerts, John would say, we're too popular. I don't need to be at this level of success. I would just be proud to be playing this music in clubs like you guys were doing two years ago Anthensp. The final dates with Fruscianti were a mess and Fruscianti was so disconnected from the group, often changing the way he played on certain songs, which further got under Kita's skin. Unknown to others, Fruscianti was also starting his own drug habit at the time and was shutting himself off from everyone except for his girlfriend. 
Frusciante abruptly quit the band hours before a show during the Blood Sugar Japanese tour in May 1992. The band reached out to Dave Navarro, who had just split from Jane's addiction, but who was involved in his own personal drug battles. The group held rehearsals with Xander Schloss, though after a few days they decided he was not the right fit either. Guitarist Eric Marshall, of Los Angeles band Martial Law, was hired to replace Frusciante and the band headlined the Lollapalooza Festival in 1992. Marshall would also appear in the music videos for Breaking the Girl, If You Have to Ask and on the Simpsons' fourth season finale, Krusty Gets Cancelled. In September 1992, The Peppers, with Marshall, performed Give It Away at the MTV Video Music Awards. The band was nominated for seven awards including Video of the Year, which they did not obtain, however, they did manage to win three other awards, including Viewer's Choice. On February 24, 1993, the band, along with George Clinton and the P. Funk All-Stars and Weapon of Choice, performed Give It Away at the Grammy Awards, a song which won the band their first Grammy later that evening. The performance marked the end of the Blood Sugar Sex Magic Tour and Marshall's final performance with the band. The band had planned to begin a follow-up to Blood Sugar Sex Magic with Marshall. However, when it came time to play music, Marshall was always busy, so the band decided that Marshall failed to fit with their future plans and he was dismissed. With Marshall gone, the band decided to hold open auditions, which they considered a huge mess, but which however did lead to an encounter with Buck Theod. The band enjoyed his rehearsal even though he claimed to have never heard of them, Flea felt he did not fit the feel of the band. Still without a guitarist, Kiedis was out one night at a local club and spotted Jesse Tobias of the Los Angeles-based band Mother Tongue. Kiedis felt like he had the right vibe for the band and he was recruited to be the new guitarist after a few auditions. However, his tenure with the band did not last long, with the rest of the band stating that the chemistry wasn't right. It was at this same time that Smith informed the band that Navarro was now ready to join the band. When offered the spot this time he accepted. Transitional Period, 1993-1997 Navarro first appeared with the band at Woodstock 94. The band opened their set wearing enormous light bulb costumes attached precariously to chrome metallic suits, making it near impossible for them to play their instruments. Navarro hated the idea but went with it. The performance saw the debut of new songs such as Warped, Aeroplane, and P. Although the songs were in the beginning stages and the lyrics were very different from the final versions. The band followed up their performance at Woodstock with a brief tour, which included headlining appearances at the Puckel Pop and Reading Festivals as well two performances as the opening act for the Rolling Stones. According to Kiedis, however, opening for the Stones was a horrible experience. While externally, the band appeared to be settled, the relationship between the three established members and Navarro had begun to deteriorate. His differing musical background made performing difficult as they began playing together, and continued to be an issue over the next year. Navarro admitted he did not care for funk music or jamming. Kiedis was also struggling with his heroin addiction, he had been through a dental procedure in Beverly Hills, in which an addictive sedative, Valium, was used, this caused him to relapse, and he once again became dependent on drugs, although the band would not find this out until later. Navarro's joining and Kiedis's continued drug addiction had a profound effect on the band and the subsequent sound of their next album, One Hot Minute, 1995. With Frusciante no longer present for collaboration, Songs were written at a far slower rate. Working with Frusciante had been something Kiedis took for granted, John had been a true anomaly when it came to songwriting. He made it even easier than Hillel to create music, even though I'd known Hillel for years. I just figured that was how all guitar players were, that you showed them your lyrics and sang a little bit and the next thing you knew you had a song. That didn't happen right off the bat with Dave. To compensate, Kiedis and bassist Flea took several vacations together, during which entire songs were conceived and with Kiedis often absent from recording due to his drug problems or struggling to come up with lyrics, Flea took a much bigger role in the writing process, coming up with ideas for many songs including full lyrics and even singing lead on his own song, P. 
Navarro's only album with the band was One Hot Minute, released on September 12, 1995 after many delays and setbacks. Navarro's guitar work had created a stylistic departure in the band's sound, which was now characterized by prominent use of heavy metal guitar riffs and hints of psychedelic rock. The band described the album as a darker, sadder record compared to their previous material, which was not as universally well received as Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Many of the lyrics written by Kiedis were drug related, including the lead single, Warped, which left Kiedis stunned that nobody else in the band picked up on his lyrics that he was using again. Broken relationships and deaths of friends and family also played a major role in the album's darker tone and lyrics. The ballad, Tear Jerker, was written about Kurt Cobain, while Transcending, which was written by Flea, was about longtime friend, River Phoenix, and the single Shallow Be Thy Game took shots at religion. Despite mixed reviews, the album was a commercial success. Selling 8 million copies worldwide, it spawned the band's third number one single, The Ballad My Friends, and enjoyed chart success with the songs Warped and Aeroplane. This iteration of the band appeared on several soundtracks. I Found Out, a John Lennon cover, was featured on Working Class Hero, a tribute to John Lennon. The Ohio Players cover, Love Roller Coaster, was featured on the Beavis and Butthead Do America soundtrack, and was released as a single. The band began its tour for One Hot Minute in Europe on September 27, 1995 and played 16 shows. A U.S. tour was to follow but was postponed after Chad Smith broke his wrist. The band considered carrying on with the tour even at one point considering Jack Irons as a replacement for Smith but there just was not enough time to rehearse with anyone new and the dates were rescheduled for early 1996. The band spent most of 1996 playing shows in the United States and Europe. By 1997, for the first time, the band cancelled many shows. Most of this was again due to problems within the band. Flea at that point was exhausted tired of playing the same songs each night and was seriously talking about quitting the band while Kiedis had recently been involved in a motorcycle accident which left one arm in a sling and created yet another drug relapse due to his use of painkillers. Even Navarro was back to using drugs. 1997 saw the band playing just one show. This was at the very first Fuji Rock Festival on July 26, 1997. A massive typhoon hit that day but the band played anyway. They played through an eight-song set before having to cut the show short due to the storm. This would be the final show with Navarro and due to Flea's previous comments left many speculating if it was the end of the band. After making attempts to carry on with Navarro and record a follow-up to One Hot Minute, things were not working out, and due to Navarro's drug problems and lack of effort in wanting to create new music and chemistry on the road, the band felt it was time to part ways. In April 1998 it was announced that Navarro had left the band due to creative differences, Kiedis stated that the decision was mutual. Reports at the time, however, indicated Navarro's departure came after he attended a band practice under the influence of drugs, which at one point involved him falling backwards over his own amp. Return of Fruscianti and New Found Popularity, 1998-2001 in the years following his departure from the band, it became public that John Fruscianti had developed a heroin addiction, which left him in poverty and near death. Fruscianti had lost contact with most of his friends. However, Flea always remained in contact, and he helped talk Fruscianti into admitting himself to Los Encinas Drug Rehabilitation Center in January 1998. He concluded the process in February of that year and began renting a small apartment in Silver Lake. He acquired many injuries and problems in the years of his addiction, some requiring surgery, including permanent scarring on his arms, a restructured nose, and an oral infection, which led to his teeth being removed and replaced with dental implants. After Navarro's departure in early 1998, Red Hot Chili Peppers were on the verge of breaking up. Flea told Kiedis, the only way I could imagine carrying on with Red Hot Chili Peppers is if we got John back in the band. Kiedis was surprised and thought there was no way Fruscianti would ever want to work with him as the two still had unresolved personal problems from when Fruscianti quit in 1992. 
with Fruscianti free of his addictions and ailments, Kitas and Flea thought it was an appropriate time to invite him back. In April 1998, when Flea visited him at his home and asked him to rejoin the band, Fruscianti began sobbing and said nothing would make me happier in the world. Flea decided to contact Anthony and have him meet with John to try and resolve any personal problems that the two might have had. Flea was relieved to find out that both had no bad blood towards each other and were once again excited to make music together. Within the weekend, for the first time in six years, the reunited foursome jump-started the newly reunited Red Hot Chili Peppers. Anthony Kiedis said of the situation, For me, that was the defining moment of what would become the next six years of our lives together. That was when I knew that this was the real deal, that the magic was about to happen again. Suddenly we could all hear, we could all listen, and instead of being caught up in our finite little balls of bullshit, we could all become players in that great universal orchestra again. Despite the band's elation, Fruscianti was both mentally and physically torn. Fruscianti had not played with the band since his departure and other than his solo albums had not picked up a guitar in years. He had lost his guitars in a house fire from which he barely escaped and experienced a difficult time resuming his prior life. Nonetheless, the group began jamming in Flea's garage and it did not take long for Fruscianti to regain his talent, new songs began to roll out. Fruscianti's return restored a key component of the Chili Peppers sound, as well as a healthy morale. He brought with him his deep devotion to music which affected the band's recording style during the sessions which produced their next album. Fruscianti has frequently stated that his work on Californication was his favorite. On June 8, 1999, after more than a year of production and meticulous practice, Californication was released as the band's seventh studio album. The album ultimately sold over 16 million copies and became the band's most successful recording to date. Californication contained fewer rap-driven songs than its predecessors, instead integrating textured, consistent, and melodic guitar riffs, vocals and bass lines. The record produced three more number one modern rock hits, Scar Tissue, Other Side, and Californication. Californication gained positive critical acceptance in contrast to its less popular predecessor, One Hot Minute, and was a greater success worldwide. While many critics credited the success of the album to Fruscianti's return, they also noted that Kita's vocals had also greatly improved. It was later listed at number 399 on the Rolling Stone magazine list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. In July 1999, as part of the band's two-year-long international world tour in support of their new album, Red Hot Chili Peppers played at Woodstock 1999 which became infamous for the violence that resulted. Some ten minutes before the show, they were asked by Jimi Hendrix's stepsister to play a cover of her brother's songs. After some hesitation due to not having performed the song in years, the band decided to play his classic Fire, which they had covered on Mother's Milk. Coincidentally, about two-thirds of the way into the band's set, the closing set of the three-day concert, a small fire escalated into full-fledged vandalism and resulted in the intervention of riot control squads. The disruption escalated into violence when nearby property including ATMs and several semi-tractor trailers were looted and destroyed. Kitas felt that it was clear that this situation had nothing to do with Woodstock anymore. It wasn't symbolic of peace and love, but of greed and cashing in. We woke up to papers and radio stations vilifying us for playing fire. The tour also originated the band's first concert DVD, 2001's Off the Map. Continued success, 2001-2007. The writing and formation of the band's next album, by the way began immediately following the culmination of Californication's world tour, in spring 2001. As with Californication, much of the creation took place in the band members' homes, and other locations of practice such as a recording studio stage. Kitas recalled of the situation, we started finding some magic and some music and some riffs and some rhythms and some jams and some grooves, and we added to it and subtracted from it and pushed it around and put melodies to it. Fruscianti and Kitas would collaborate for days straight, discussing and sharing guitar progressions and lyrics. For Kitas, writing by the way, was a whole different experience from Californication. 
John was back to himself and brimming with confidence. Before recording by the way, 2002, the Chili Peppers decided that they would again have Rick Rubin produce the album. In the past, Rubin had given the band creative freedom on their recording material, this was something they thought essential for the album to be unique, and could only occur with his return. Originally the album was headed in a much different direction than the final production. The album started out as a group of fast, hardcore punk songs, which Rubin rejected. Fruscianti also wanted a darker, 1980s UK pop new wave sound mixed in with 1980s hardcore. The recording process was tough for Flea, who felt like an outsider in the band and that his role was being diminished due to a musical power struggle with Fruscianti. Flea wanted to create more funk-inspired songs, while Fruscianti felt that the band had overused their funk side. Flea considered quitting the band after the album, but the two eventually worked out all their problems. By the Way was released on July 9, 2002 and produced four singles, By the Way, The Zephyr Song, Can't Stop and Universally Speaking. The album was their most subdued album to date, focusing primarily on melodic ballads as opposed to their classic rap-driven funk. Fruscianti also concentrated on a more layered texture on many of the songs, often adding keyboard parts, that featured low in the mix and also writing string arrangements for songs such as Midnight and Minor Thing. The album was followed by an 18-month-long world tour. The European leg of the By The Way tour produced the band's second full-length concert DVD, Live at Slane Castle, recorded at Slane Castle in Ireland on August 23, 2003. The band released their first full-length live album, Live in Hyde Park, recorded during their performances in Hyde Park, London. More than 258,000 fans paid over $17,100,000 for tickets over three nights, a 2004 record, the event ranked number one on Billboard's top concert boxes scores of 2004. In November 2003, the Chili Peppers released their greatest hits album, which featured two new songs, Fortune Faded and Save the Population. The two songs were selected out of sessions that generated 15 tracks and Smith later said the band had hopes to use along with new compositions to create a full album after finishing the tour, but the idea was vetoed by Fruscianti because his musical influences and styles had evolved and he wanted to do something new. In 2006 the band released the Grammy award-winning Stadium Arcadium produced by Rick Rubin. Although 38 songs were created with the intention of being released as three separate albums spaced six months apart, the band instead chose to release a 28-track double album, and released nine of the ten as B-sides. It was their first album to debut at number one on the US charts, where it stayed for two weeks, and debuted at number one in the UK and 25 other countries. Stadium Arcadium sold over 7 million units. The record's first single, Danny California, was the band's fastest-selling single, debuting on top of the modern rock chart in the U.S., peaking at number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100, and reaching number 2 in the U.K. Tell Me Baby, released next, also topped the charts in 2006. Snow, Hey Oh, was released in late 2006, breaking multiple records by 2007. The song became their 11th number one single, giving the band a cumulative total of 81 weeks at number one. It was also the first time three consecutive singles by the band made it to number one. Desecration Smile was released internationally in February 2007 and reached number 27 on the UK charts. Hump to Bump was planned to be the next single for the US, Canada, and Australia only, but due to positive feedback from the music video, it was released as a worldwide single in May 2007. The band began another world tour in support of Stadium Arcadium in 2006, beginning with promotional concerts in Europe and culminating in a two-month-long European tour from late May to mid-July. During this tour Fruscianti's friend and frequent musical collaborator Josh Klinghoffer joined the touring band, contributing guitar parts, backup vocals, and keyboards. Klinghoffer's presence allowed the live performances of songs to sound more like the recorded versions, in which Fruscianti laid down multiple tracks himself. The group toured North America from early August to early November, 
returning to Europe later in November for a second leg, that ran until mid-December. The Chili Peppers began 2007 with a second North American leg, this time including Mexico, from mid-January to mid-March. This was followed by April shows in various cities in Australia and New Zealand and concerts in Japan in early June. The Peppers concluded their tour with a third European leg from late June to late August. They appeared at the Live Earth concert at London's Wembley Stadium on July 7, 2007. The band appeared at several festivals, including Denmark's Roskilde Festival, Ireland's Oxygen in July 2006, Lollapalooza in August 2006 in Grant Park, Chicago, a subsequent set at the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival in Indio, California in late April 2007 and in August 2007 they appeared as one of three headliners at the Reading and Leeds festivals along with Razorlight and Smashing Pumpkins. In February 2007, Stadium Arcadium won five Grammys, Best Rock Album, Best Rock Song, Danny California, Best Rock Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocal, Danny California, Best Boxed or Special Limited Edition Package, and Best Producer, Rick Rubin, Dot Rolling Stones 100 Best Albums of the Decade, 2000-2009, included Stadium Arcadium at number 74. Hiatus and Fruscianti's Second Departure, 2008-2009 Following the last leg of the Stadium Arcadium Tour, the band members took an extended break. Kiedis attributed this to the band being worn out from their years of non-stop work since Californication, 1999. The band's only recording during this time was in 2008 with George Clinton on his latest album George Clinton and His Gangsters of Love. Accompanied by Kim Manning, the band recorded a new version of Shirley and Lee's classic Let the Good Times Roll. The song would become the last song the band would record with Fruscianti. Kiedis, who had recently become a father, was looking forward to the time off and taking care of his son Everly Bear and possibly creating a short television series called Spider and Son, which was set to recap his autobiography. Flea began taking music theory classes at the University of Southern California, and revealed plans to release a mainly instrumental solo record, that was being recorded in his home, guest musicians include Patti Smith and a choir from the Silver Lake Conservatory. Flea also joined Tom York of Radiohead in the supergroup Adams for Peace. Fruscianti continued his solo career and released his solo album, The Empyrean. Chad Smith worked with Sammy Hager, Joe Satriani and Michael Anthony in the supergroup Chicken Foot, as well as on his solo project, Chad Smith's Bombastic Meat Bats. The band planned to remain on hiatus for a minimum of one year. In October 2009 the band officially ended their hiatus and Minus Fruscianti, entered the studio to begin writing for their 10th studio album. The band was joined by Josh Klinghoffer, who to the public was still the band's backup touring guitarist, although it was later confirmed, that he was already an official member and Fruscianti's replacement with Fruscianti having quit the band on July 29, 2009. An official announcement on Fruscianti's departure wasn't made until December 2009. Fruscianti explained on his MySpace page, that there was no drama or anger about him leaving the band this time, and that the other members were very supportive and understanding. Fruscianti said he felt his musical interests had led him in a different direction, and that he needed to fully focus his efforts on his solo career. Klinghoffer replaces Fruscianti and I am with you. 2010-2014. The band, with Josh Klinghoffer on guitar, made their live comeback on January 29, 2010, paying tribute to Neil Young with a cover of A Man Needs a Maid at Moosey Cares. After months of speculation, in February 2010 Klinghoffer was officially confirmed by Chad Smith as Fruscianti's full-time replacement. The band officially began recording their 10th studio album with producer Rick Rubin in September 2010. According to Rubin, the band recorded enough material to release a second double album, following Stadium Arcadium but ultimately decided not to. Rubin notes, it was painful not to share all of the material that we had, but we felt it would be too much. We really wanted it to be 12 songs but it ended up being 14 just because nobody could agree on which 12. 
the recording process lasted until March 2011. Many of the songs were written between October 2009 and August 2010 and according to Flea around 60-70 songs were written in the 10 months prior to entering the studio to record the album. In July 2011, the band kicked off a trio of invitation-only warm-up dates in California. These were the first shows the band played since August 2007 and their first official shows with Josh as their lead guitarist. I Am With You the band's 10th studio album was released in the United States in August 2011. The album topped the charts in 18 different countries although failed to provide the band with their second straight number one debut in the US. The album was met with mostly positive reviews from the critics. The album's first single, The Adventures of Rain Dance Maggie was released a month earlier and went on to become the band's 12th number one hit single, topping their own record. Creation was tapped to direct the music video for the single, however due to unknown reasons, the video shot by Creation went unreleased and a second video directed by Mark Klasfeld was released in its place. Monarchy of Roses, Look Around and Did I Let You Know, released only in Brazil, followed as singles music videos. Brendan's Death Song would be the next single and released during the summer of 2012. The band kicked off a month-long promotional tour in August 2011 starting in Asia. On August 30, 2011, the band appeared on movie screens throughout the world via satellite from Cologne, Germany performing the entire new album in sequence, minus even you Brutus and adding Give It Away and Me and My Friends. The band officially kicked off the I'm With You tour on September 11, 2011, the next day, on September 12, they played in Costa Rica. On December 31, 2011 the band was hired by Roman Abramovich for a reported £5 million to perform at his New Year's Eve celebration at his estate on the Caribbean island of St. Bart's, and the show included a special appearance from Toots Hibbert of Toots and the Maidles as they played a rendition of Louie Louie together. The tour lasted into 2013 and was one of the band's biggest to date. All shows from the upcoming world tour were made available to purchase as downloads through livechilipeppers.com. The North American leg of the tour, which was expected to begin on January 19, 2012, had to be postponed due to a surgery Ketis went to resolve multiple foot injuries he had suffered through since the Stadium Arcadium tour. The first U.S. leg of the tour, including dates in Canada, kicked off in March 2012 and lasted into June followed by summer shows in Europe, while the rest of the already scheduled U.S. dates took place in August and then from September through November 2012. Jack Irons and Cliff Martinez again joined the band during their August 12, 2012 performance of Give It Away in Los Angeles. Following the I Am With You World Tour, the band set out on another small tour consisting mostly of festivals in the United States however the tour expanded to dates in South America as well for November. Flea along with Chili Peppers touring percussionist, Mauro Rifosco spent the band's break keeping busy with their side project Adams for Peace, who had many dates throughout the world scheduled from July to November 2013. The band was nominated for two MTV Europe Music Awards for Best Rock Band and Best Live Artist and nominated for Best Group at the 2012 People's Choice Awards I Am With You was also nominated for a 2012 Grammy Award for Best Rock Album. The band released 2011 Live EP on March 29, 2012. The EP A Free 5 Live Song MP3 download through their website. The five songs were selected by Chad Smith from the band's 2011 European Live Albums, which were released for purchase through their website as well. On April 14, 2012, the band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. May 1, 2012 saw the release of digital download-only Rock and Roll Hall of Fame covers EP which consisted of previously released studio and live covers of artists, that influenced the band. In addition to their newly released live performances, starting in August 2012, the band started to put out a collection of singles from the I Am With You sessions. The singles, which contained two songs each and total 17 songs were made available on 7-inch vinyl, digital download and CD. 
All of the singles were eventually released together as I Am Beside You LP on November 29, 2013 as a Record Store Day exclusive. The band finished the I Am With You tour in April 2013. The tour ranked 15th on Billboard's Top 25 Tours list of 2012. Following the end of that tour, the band headed right back out on the road the next month for another lengthy tour which included their first ever shows in Alaska, Paraguay, the Philippines, and Puerto Rico. The Chili Peppers joined Bruno Mars as performers at the Super Bowl 48 halftime show on February 2, 2014, to which a record 115.3 million viewers tuned in. The band's performance was met with mixed reviews from fans, the media, and even musicians towards Flea and Klinghoffer for performing to pre-recorded music. Flea responded that it was a NFL rule for bands to pre-record music due to time and technical issues, and that the band agreed because it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He said Kita's vocals were completely live and the band pre-recorded Give It Away during rehearsals. In June 2014 the band wrapped up their tour which began in May 2013, since September 2011 they had played 158 shows on their two tours, the longest span of touring in their history without a real break. 2012-13 Live EP was released on July 1, 2014 through their website as a free download. Like the 2011 Live EP, Five songs were selected by Chad Smith from the band's tour as a way to announce the official conclusion of the tour. The Getaway, 2014 and Dash, Present. On November 17, 2014, Anthony Kiedis announced that the band would be returning to the studio in December to record their newly written album. He said that he hoped for the album to contain 13 songs, however it is likely they will put 10 more songs on top of that. A few days later in an interview with David Fricka, Kiedis confirmed that Rick Rubin would not be producing the band's next record and for the first time since 1989 they would work with someone else. Flea broke the news on Twitter in January 2015 that Danger Mouse would be the producer. The following month Flea suffered a broken arm during a skiing trip which delayed the recording of the album for over six months. In an October 2015 interview with Rolling Stone, Kiedis gave an update on the band's next album. The following month, Chad Smith posted in a video to a fan page on Twitter saying that he expected the new album to be finished in May or June 2016 which would be around the same time that the band would be in the midst of their summer festival tour. In December 2015, Flea said that the album was recorded and they were waiting on Kiedis to track the vocals. Kiedis gave an update two months later in February 2016 saying they were near completion of the album. Chad Smith posted an image on Twitter on March 21, 2016 stating that work has begun with Nigel Godrich mixing the new album. The following day it was reported that Elton John would appear on the album. The band announced on May 2, 2016 that Dark Necessities, the first single from their upcoming album, would be released on May 5, 2016. On May 5, 2016, it was announced that the band's 11th album would be entitled The Getaway, and would be released on June 17, 2016. Kiedis in a May 9, 2016 interview on BBC Radio 2 said of the album that lyrically many of the songs were influenced by a two-year relationship that fell apart like a nuclear bomb. Dark Necessities became the band's 25th top 10 single on the Billboard Alternative Songs chart, a record they hold over U2 who currently has 23 top 10 singles. On February 3, 2016, Circle of the Noose, one of the band's most sought-after unreleased songs and the only song recorded with Dave Navarro for the follow-up album to One Hot Minute before he was fired from the band, was leaked to the internet. The rough mix was recorded on March 16. 1998. Dave Navarro, who in 1997 said it was one of the greatest songs he ever played on, tweeted wow what a trip down memory lane in response to the leak. Three days following the leak of the unreleased Navarro era song, the band played Aeroplane Live for the first time since July 26, 1997, making it the first one hot minute song besides P, a song featuring only Flea to be performed by the Chili Peppers since Navarro's departure from the band. On May 14, 
the band was forced to cancel their headling slot at the annual KROQ Weenie Roast, as Kiedis was hospitalized prior to the band appearing on stage, due to severe stomach pain. Flea alongside, Klinghoffer and Smith made an announcement on the stage as they were due to appear. It was confirmed that Kiedis was suffering from intestinal flu and was expected to make a full recovery soon however the band was forced to postpone their iHeartRadio album preview show on May 17, 2016 until May 26, 2016. The band returned to the stage on May 22, 2016 in Columbus, O. Oh. On May 26, the band released The Getaway, the title track on their upcoming album, on their YouTube channel. While not a single, it was originally the band's choice to be the first single until they went with Dark Necessities at the suggestion of Danger Mouse, the song was made available for purchase the following day and was also being given away as a free download for those who pre-order the new album. The music video for Dark Necessities, directed by actress Olivia Wilde, was released on June 16, 2016. Go Robot the song management and the band's label originally wanted as the first single, is expected to be the second single released from the album. We Turn Red was released on the band's YouTube page on June 9, 2016. The Getaway made its debut at number 2 on the Billboard 200 chart however failed to dethrone Drake who had the number 1 album for 8 consecutive weeks. The Getaway outsold Drake its opening week with album sales of 108,000 to 33,000 actually placing him at fourth in sales for the week, though due to album streaming, Drake managed to top the band for the top position in the charts. On July 1, 2016, the Live in Paris EP was released exclusively through the music streaming website Deezer. Go Robot was announced as the second single from The Getaway. On July 26, 2016, the band members started to post images from the set of the music video. The Getaway was reissued on limited edition pink vinyl on September 27, 2016 as part of 10 bands One Cause. All money from sales of the reissue will go to Gilda's Club NYC an organization that provides community support for both those diagnosed with cancer and their caretakers. It is named after comedian Gilda Radner. In August 2016, Dark Necessities became the band's 13th number one single on the Alternative Songs chart. The band has held the record since 2000 and SIXS Snow, Hey Oh, and extended their lead over runner-up Linkin Park, 11. The song was also the band's 25th top 10 single on the Alternative Songs chart, extending their record over runner-up U2, 23. It also became only the fourth song ever to top the mainstream rock, alternative songs, and adult alternative charts. The music video for Go Robot was released on September 8. 2016. The video is heavily inspired by the 1970s movie Saturday Night Fever. The band kicked off the headlining portion of the Getaway World Tour in September 2016 with the North American Leg, featuring Jack Irons, the band's original drummer as an opening act on all dates, beginning in January 2017. The tour is expected to last well into 2017. Chad Smith announced on November 13, 2016 that Sick Love would be the third single released from The Getaway and a music video was coming soon. The animated video, directed and illustrated by Beth Jeans Houghton, Kiedis' ex-girlfriend, was released on December 4, 2016. Anthony Kiedis was asked in a December 2016 interview if he ever plans to retire and he said that he expects to be writing music until the day he dies. We might always, writing music, writing songs, I can't imagine that going away. I want to write a song today, tomorrow. That's quite a satisfying thing to do. I think about it all the time, there's so many things that I want to sing, melodies, and lyrics. So, if you have people you want to work with for a lifetime, there's no reason you can't write songs until the day you die. Dave Ratt the band's sound engineer since February 1991, announced that following the band's January 22, 2017 show he would no longer be working with the band. 
I truly love Flea, Anthony, Chad, Josh, and all my dear and close friends I consider family both on the road now and those that have moved on to other adventures over the years. I am pretty happy to say that I have dedicated significant time documenting touring with peppers in journals but also have thousands of amazing photos spanning decades of smiles and challenges Rat said. Recognition and Legacy The band's mix of hard rock, funk, and hip-hop has been recognized as being influential to genres such as funk metal, rap metal rap rock and new metal. In a 2002 interview with Penthouse, Anthony Kiedis stated we were early in creating the combination of hardcore funk with hip-hop style vocals. We became, maybe, an inspiration to Limp Bizkit, Kid Rock, Linkin Park all these other bands that are doing that now. In October 2004, Kiedis released his autobiography Scar Tissue. It tells his life story from birth in 1962 until 2004. The book follows many major events for Kiedis such as growing up in Los Angeles, coming in contact with drugs at a young age, forming the band, and the troubling drug addictions he experienced during his career. In May 2009, Kiedis was honored with the Stevie Ray Vaughan Award at the 5th Annual Moosey Cares event for his dedication and support of the Moosey Cares MAP Fund and for his commitment to helping other addicts with the addiction and recovery process. Kiedis fellow band members, Minus Fruscianti were on hand to pay tribute and under the name, The Insects, Kiedis, Smith, Flea along with Ron Wood, Josh Klinghoffer and Yvonne Neville performed a brief set of cover songs. The band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on April 14, 2012 by actor-comedian Chris Rock, who is a longtime friend and fan of the band. The induction lineup was Kiedis, Flea, Smith, Klinghoffer, Fruscianti, Slovak, who was represented by his brother James, Irons, and Martinez. Fruscianti did not attend the ceremony. Smith said we asked him, he said, I'm just not really comfortable with that, but good luck and thanks for inviting me. He's the kind of guy, I think, that once he's finished with something he's just on to the next phase of his life. The Chili Peppers are not really on his radar right now. Despite recording one album with the band, Dave Navarro and Jack Sherman were the only two former recording band members not inducted. Kiedis explained that Navarro, who appeared to be fine with not being included, was better suited for induction as a member of Jane's Addiction, the band he was best known for. Sherman on the other hand was angry about not being included and spoke out about the band's induction blaming the band for not including him or Navarro by saying he was told only original members, current members and those who played on multiple albums were eligible for induction, although this has proven to not be the case with other inductees. It appeared to be a politically correct way of omitting Dave Navarro and I for whatever reasons they have that are probably the band's and not the hall's. Sherman also said it's really painful to see all this celebrating going on and be excluded. I'm not claiming that I've brought anything other to the band, but to have soldiered on under arduous conditions to try to make the thing work, and I think that's what you do in a job, looking back. And that's been dishonored. I'm being dishonored, and it sucks. During his induction speech, Smith made sure to thank all of the band members, past and present including Sherman. Navarro along D.H. Peligro, whom he accidentally called H.R. Peligro, and Eric Marshall for the contributions they brought to the band. At 32, Klinghoffer was the youngest artist ever to be inducted into the Hall of Fame passing Stevie Wonder, who was 38 at the time of his induction. The band performed three songs, including By the Way, Give It Away and Higher Ground, which included Irons and Martinez on drums. It was the first time Kiedis and Flea had performed with Irons in 24 years and Martinez in 26 years. Near the end of the ceremony, the band was joined by George Clinton, Michael Hampton, Slash, Billy Joe Armstrong, T.R.E. Cool, Ronnie Wood and Kenny Jones for a performance of Higher Ground. In 2012, three of the band's albums Blood Sugar Sex Magic, Californication, and by the way were ranked among Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time ranked at 310, 399, and 304 respectively. The band released their book, Fandemonium on November 18, 2014. 
The book is dedicated to the band's fans throughout the world. To promote the book, Kiedis, Flea, and Smith did some in store book signings at Barnes and Noble in Los Angeles and New York. On November 20, Kiedis appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, sitting in the entire show with The Roots and performing some Chili Peppers songs while also promoting the book. Kiedis received the George and Ira Gershwin Award for Lifetime Musical Achievement, presented at the UCLA Spring Sing on May 16, 2015. Following his acceptance speech, he was joined on stage by Josh Klinghoffer for an acoustic performance of Other Side, If You Want Me to Stay, a song the Chili Peppers had not performed in almost 30 years, and by the way, the minigame Tekken Force, in the video game Tekken 4 four of the enemies in the final stage are named Anthony the Assassin, John the Assassin, Flea the Assassin and Chad the Assassin, named after the lineup of the band at the time. Activism in 1990, the band appeared in PSA ads for Rock the Vote, a non-profit organization in the United States geared toward increasing voter turnout in the United States presidential election among voters ages 18 to 24. That same year Kiedis appeared in a television special where he discussed his love for the ocean and raising awareness for ocean pollution. Since their beginning, the band has been very outspoken about the environment, supporting various environmental causes and including their views of the environment in lyrics. The band was invited by the Beastie Boys and the Mealery Paw Fund to perform at the Tibetan Freedom Concert in June 1996 in San Francisco. They also performed at the June 1998 Washington, D.C. concert as well. The concerts, which were held worldwide, were to support the cause of Tibetan independence. In September 2005, the band performed under the bridge at the React Now, music and relief benefit which was held to raise money for the victims of Hurricane Katrina. The live event, which was broadcast on various television states, raised $30 million. In July 2007, the band performed on behalf of former U.S. Vice President Al Gore who personally invited the band to perform at the London version of his Live Earth concerts which were held to raise awareness towards global warming and solving the most critical environmental issues of our time. Gore said on getting the band to perform I was pushing and pushing them that no matter how difficult it was, that it was important. In October 2008, Flea appeared in a Vote for Change ad voicing his support for Barack Obama for President of the United States in the upcoming election. The band performed a free concert in downtown Cleveland, Ohio on April 15, 2012 in support of President Obama's re-election campaign. The requirement for getting into the concert was agreeing to volunteer for the Obama 2012 phone bank. The event quickly met its capacity limit after being announced. On May 11, 2013, the band performed a special concert in Portland, Oregon for the Dalai Lama as part of the Dalai Lama Environmental Summit. According to the press release the musical element of this event is intended to be a display of joyful celebration and an inspiration to future generations to care for our planet. The Red Hot Chili Peppers have been great supporters of the Tibetan cause, of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and of the need to work to protect and preserve our environment. The band, especially Flea, has been very outspoken towards guns and gun violence sometimes speaking out about the issue during the band's concerts. In 2013, on his Twitter page, Flea posted why anyone would ever want to own an automatic weapon I will never ever understand. It's a pathetic useless concept for sick people. Automatic, semi-automatic, I don't care. I'm against M. Melt em all down turn em into sculptures there is no need for them on earth. In many countries the cops have no guns and they do perfectly fine. No civilians should be allowed to have guns. None. And I don't think the cops should have guns either. Change the constitution. On January 10, 2015, the band performed their first show of the new year for the Sean Penn and Friends Help Haiti Home fundraiser in support of the J.P. Hadian Relief Organization. On September 18, 2015 the band were among over 120 entertainers and celebrities to sign up and announce that they would be voting for Bernie Sanders in the 2016 presidential election. The band performed at a fundraiser event at the Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach on September 27, 
2015. The set featured a mixture of songs from the band's more recent albums and older songs that have not been performed in over 15 years. The band previously performed at the 600 capacity venue in 1986. The fundraiser was in support of the non-profit San Diego Foundation and tickets for the 21 and over show cost $1,000 of which $750 is tax deductible. All money was donated to A Reason to Survive, Arts, Heartbeat Music Academy, San Diego Young Artists Music Academy, and the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music. On October 17, 2015, Kitas and Flea hosted the annual benefit for the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music. The band performed a special rare acoustic set and John Legend headlined the event which also includes dinner and a silent auction. Only 300 tickets were available costing $2,500 each. On February 5, 2016, the band headlined a fundraiser concert in support of presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. On April 13, 2016, the band performed at a private function on behalf of Facebook and Napster founder Sean Parker for his launch of the Parker Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy. On April 29, 2016, Chad Smith and Will Ferrell hosted the Red Hot Benefit Comedy and Music Show and Quincy and Era. The benefit featured a performance by the Chili Peppers along with comedy acts selected by Ferrell and Funny or Die. A portion of the proceeds went to Farrell's Cancer for College and Smith's Silver Lake Conservatory of Music. Musical Style Techniques Red Hot Chili Peppers musical style has been characterized under funk rock, alternative rock, funk metal, and rap rock with influences from hard rock, psychedelic rock, and punk rock. The band's influences include Defunct, Parliament Funkadelic, Jimi Hendrix, The Misfits, James Brown, Gang of Four, Bob Marley, Big Boys, Bad Brains, Sly and the Family Stone, Ohio Players, Queen, Stevie Wonder, Elvis Presley, Deep Purple, The Beach Boys, Black Flag, Ornette Coleman, Led Zeppelin, Yes, Fugazi, Fishbone, Marvin Gaye, Billie Holiday, Santana, Elvis Costello, The Stooges, The Clash, Suzy and the Banshees, Devo, and Miles Davis. Kitas provided multiple vocal styles. His primary approach up to blood sugar sex magic was spoken verse and rapping. Complemented with traditional vocals, he helped the band maintain a consistent style. Nevertheless, as the group matured, starting with Californication, 1999, the group reduced the number of rapped verses. By the way contained only two rap-driven verse melodic chorus form. Kita's more recent style was developed through ongoing coaching. Original guitarist Slovak's style was strongly based on blues and funk. Slovak was primarily influenced by hard rock artists such as Jimi Hendrix, Kiss and Led Zeppelin. His playing method was highly based on improvisation, a style commonly used in funk music. He also was noted for his aggressive playing style. He would often play with such force, that his fingers would come apart. Kitas observed that his playing evolved during his time away from the group in What Is This, with Slovak adopting a more fluid style featuring sultry elements as opposed to his original hard rock techniques. On the Uplift Mofo Party Plan, 1987, Slovak experimented with genres outside of traditional funk music including reggae and speed metal. His guitar riffs would often serve as the basis of the group's songs with the other members writing their parts to complement his guitar work. His melodic riff featured in the song Behind the Sun inspired the group to create pretty songs with an emphasis on melody. Kitas describes the song as pure Hillel inspiration. Slovak also used a talk box on songs such as Green Heaven and Funky Crime, in which he would sing into a tube while playing to create psychedelic effects. Fruscianti's musical style has evolved over the course of his career. His guitar playing employs melody and emotion rather than virtuosity. Although virtuoso influences can be heard throughout his career, he has said that he often minimizes this. Fruscianti brought a more melodic and textured sound to albums such as Californication, 1999, By the Way, 2002, and Stadium Arcadium, 2006.
This contrasts with his previous abrasive approach in Mother's Milk, as well as his dry, funky, and more docile arrangements on Blood Sugar Sex Magic. On Californication, 1999, and by the way, 2002, Fruscianti derived the technique of creating tonal texture through chord patterns from post-punk guitarist Vini Riley of the Durati Column, and bands such as Fugazi and The Cure. On by the way, he wanted lead guitar to be something you could sing, his guitar playing was then influenced by John McGiach of Suzy and the Banshees, Johnny Marr of the Smiths and Bernard Sumner of Joy Division. He initially wanted to take another direction and intended the record to be made up of these punky, rough songs, drawing inspiration from early punk artists such as The Germs and The Damned. However, this was discouraged by producer Rick Rubin, and he instead built upon Californication's 1999, melodically driven style. During the recording of Stadium Arcadium, 2006, he moved away from his new wave influences and concentrated on emulating flashier guitar players such as Hendrix and Van Hollen. Navarro brought an entirely different sound to the band during his tenure, with his style based on heavy metal, progressive rock, and psychedelia. Current guitarist Klinghoffer's style employs a wide range of unconventional guitar effects and vocal treatments. In his debut Chili Peppers album, I Am With You, 2011, he focused heavily on producing a textured, emotional sound to complement the vocals and atmosphere of each song. He has stated that he is a huge fan of jazz and funk, which shows itself in many of the album's tracks. Flea's electric bass style is an amalgamation of funk, psychedelic, punk, and hard rock. The groove-heavy, low-tuned melodies, played through either finger-picking, or slapping, contributed to their signature style. While Flea's slap bass style was prominent in earlier albums, albums after Blood Sugar Sex Magic have more melodic and funk-driven bass lines. He has also used double stops on some newer songs. Flea's bass playing has changed considerably throughout the years. When he joined Fear, his technique centered largely around traditional punk rock bass lines, however he was to change this style, when Red Hot Chili Peppers formed. He began to incorporate a slap bass style, that drew influence largely from Bootsy Collins. Blood Sugar Sex Magic saw a notable shift in style as it featured none of his signature technique but rather styles, that focused more on traditional and melodic roots. His intellectual beliefs, on how to play the instrument, were also altered, I was trying to play simply on Blood Sugar Sex Magic because I had been playing too much prior to that, so I thought. I've really got to chill out and play half as many notes. When you play less, it's more exciting there's more room for everything. If I do play something busy, it stands out, instead of the bass being a constant onslaught of notes. Space is good. Drummer Smith blends rock with funk. He mixes funk, rock, metal, and jazz to his beats. Influences include Buddy Rich to John Bonham. He brought a different sound to Mother's Milk, playing tight and fast. In Blood Sugar Sex Magic, he displays greater power. He is recognized for his ghost notes, his beats and his fast right foot. Music Radar put him in sixth place on their list of the 50 greatest drummers of all time, behind Mike Portnoy, Neil Peart, Keith Moon, Rich, and Bonham. Lyrics and Songwriter Through the years, Keita's lyrics covered a variety of topics, which shifted as time progressed. Early in the group's career, Kiedis wrote mostly comical songs filled with sexual innuendos as well as songs inspired by friendship and the band members' personal experiences. However, after the death of his close friend and bandmate Hillel Slovak, Kiedis' lyrics became much more introspective and personal, as exemplified by The Mother's Milk, 1989, song Knock Me Down, which was dedicated to Slovak along with the Blood Sugar Sex Magic, 1991, song, My Lovely Man. When the band recorded One Hot Minute, 1995, Kiedis had turned to drugs once again, which resulted in darker lyrics. He began to write about anguish, and the self-mutilating thoughts he would experience as a result of his heroin and cocaine addiction. The album also featured tributes to close friends the band lost during the recording process including Kurt Cobain on the song Tearjerker and River Phoenix, 
on the song Transcending. After witnessing Frusciante's recovery from his heroin addiction, Kiedis wrote many songs inspired by rebirth and the meaning of life on Californication, 1999. He was also intrigued by the life lessons, that the band had learned including Kiedis' experience with meeting a young mother at the YMCA, who was attempting to battle her crack addiction while living with her infant daughter. On By The Way, 2002, Kiedis was lyrically influenced by love, his girlfriend, and the emotions expressed when one fell in love. Drugs also played an integral part in Kiedis' writings, as he had only been sober since December 2000. Tracks like This Is The Place and Don't Forget Me expressed his intense dislike for narcotics and the harmful physical and emotional effects they caused him. Stadium Arcadium, 2006, continued the themes of love and romance, Kiedis stated, that love and women, pregnancies and marriages, relationship struggles those are real and profound influences on this record. And it's great, because it wasn't just me writing about the fact that I'm in love. It was everybody in the band. We were brimming with energy based on falling in love. I Am With You, 2011, again featured Kiedis writing about the loss of a close friend this time in the song Brendan's Death Song, a tribute to club owner Brendan Mullen who gave the band some of their earliest shows and showed support to them throughout their career. Themes within Kiedis' repertoire include love and friendship, teenage angst, good time aggression, various sexual topics and the link between sex and music, political and social commentary, Native American issues in particular, romance loneliness, globalization and the cons of fame in Hollywood, poverty, drugs, alcohol, dealing with death, and California.